Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Odin's Movie Vlog. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well. And today we've got some pretty interesting news at the box office slash movie theater slash theaters reopening side of entertainment news. And that is that Black Widow, Marvel's Black Widow, has now officially jumped out of 2020 into summer of 2021's release, spurring Marvel picks release dates to shift. So their entire calendar has now indeed been shifted back. West Side Story has been delayed for an entire year. I wish that it was delayed indefinitely because no one has asked for or wants a remake of a classic film, especially one like West Side Story, especially by someone like <laughs> Steven Spielberg, who has not been making a lot of great films recently. And Soul apparently is set to officially be staying theatrical for now. And whether or not it stays theatrical or not is going to be a giant question mark. But to me, this seems to kind of throw a cog into the spin campaign that was being done by Yahoo, by other media outlets saying that, oh, Mulan on Disney Plus has been doing so well. It's been doing so incredibly well. They're making hundreds of millions of dollars. And look at the data we have, even though they actually have no actual data. And it's funny how they have a percentage of users, but then they don't actually have the total number of users. And they still expect us to believe that that their numbers are accurate. And so someone actually did a joke saying, well, you know, if we were to take this at its most smallest portion, like if we took the lowest number of subscribers they could possibly have, you literally you have a range of between $320 total to $300 million is the range of how much money Mulan could have made up to this point over on Disney+. Plus. So it's interesting how Black Widow has now been moved all together until 2021 instead of getting some kind of a release similar to that of Mulan onto the Disney Plus network. Because if Disney Plus' Mulan was doing incredibly well and was doing so well, as well as everyone seems to have been saying that it was, then it would be a no-brainer for them to put Black Widow on Disney+, Plus, make that extra cash, and instead of releasing it on Disney+, Plus for free, like they're doing for Mulan, you could then say it will eventually be released in theaters, or we'll release it in theaters in addition to this as well. Now, of course, the only problem with that would be spending $30 to watch it on Disney+, Plus at home, versus spending much less than that to go to a theater, but I think that they could have worked it out in some way or the other. Probably maybe even saying $30 if you want to see it immediately on Disney+, Plus, or you can wait a year or six months or whatever it is they want to put to it, and then you can see See it in theaters for much less. With all that being said, though, it is the first time, this is actually a historical moment, it's the first time since 2009 that we have not had a MCU film in theaters, which is kind of crazy when you go back to think of it. You think about the history of the MCU, you think about where it started before Disney took over, where it's gone since Disney took over, the future of Disney, of course, trying to push it in certain directions. And it's kind of crazy to think that we have not had a year in the better part of a decade. Uh, we have not had a year where we have not had an MCU film until now, the year 2020. Because guess what? If it can happen, it will happen. Because 2020 has honestly become the Murphy's Law of any specific year. What is interesting, though, is that Soul, the animated film, uh, which has gotten a lot of press because it's going to feature the first ever... Uh, animated persons of color in the Pixar history, uh, which, again, I find kind of interesting that that's a big deal. Again, I thought the whole point of us was to say, oh, we shouldn't be able to see anyone for their race or for their gender and say so we should see them as people. But, of course, if I were to say that, I would be called the hateful one. But let's go ahead and dive into this news article give, coming to us from Deadline. In the wake of COVID-19's continued grip on the box office, Disney made another big round of release date changes Wednesday. The good news for exhibition being nothing is heading to Disney+. Plus. That includes Pixar's Soul, which is currently sticking to its November 20th release against MGM's James Bond movie, No Time to Die, if those dates absolutely stick. But the problem that we're finding ourselves in, though, is every time a major company like Disney or Warner Brothers decides to move their film until 2021, it means less films, especially films that are going to actually draw in bigger audiences, are actually going to be shown this year. And if less films with big audiences are being shown in theaters this year, it means the theater chains are going to have an even more difficult time staying open for one and making profit for the other, which means that essentially the theater industry is going to be in a much weaker place than what it is right now going into next year. Sure, restrictions might be lifted at that point or might be less restrictive at that point. More, theater, more theaters might be open in various more states and countries, but if many theaters have to shut down, if many companies like AMC, for instance, which is a filing to sell their stock for cash as the exhibition continues to struggle, you're looking at a situation where you could have major companies like AMC having to sell off various theaters themselves or even certain chains shutting down certain theaters or doing any other myriad of other things to try and stay afloat. 
To me, it's a self-defeating proposition. Obviously, you're going to take the risk of putting your film out in theaters and the possibility of not making a whole lot of money. A great example of that would be Warner Brothers Tenet, right? It's made $250 plus million dollars worldwide, but when the film costs $200 million to actually produce, another $100 million or so to actually market the movie, and then you're splitting the revenues that you are already getting from the box office, you're looking at a situation where the film is not set to make a whole lot of money and could potentially be in the red for a long time. Maybe it'll make it back on DVD, Blu-ray, 4K, or when other states and countries open, but it's a lot harder to say. So I totally understand from one side of it why Disney would want to move a film like Black Widow, a film that they expect to make a lot of money into 2021. But if they expect to make a crap ton of money next year, they are going to need those theaters to be at full capacity and also at full strength. But if all these chains are having to shut theaters down because they're not doing anything, because they're not making money, because there's no movies coming out until November, really, at this point, what do you think is going to happen? So while we all know uh, Black Widow was set to move, it's by far the biggest shift on Disney theatrical calendar going from November 6th to May 7th of 2021. That's a complete annual delay of Black Widow from its original pre-pandemic release date of May 1st this year. Black Widow shift kicks Marvel's Eternals from February 12th, 2021 to November 5th of 2021. Based on what I'm hearing from that film, they're going to need that extra time. And moves Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings from May 7th, 2021 until July 9th, 2021, a post-Independence Day release date that Disney had already reserved for an untitled feature. Trickling up into Eternals' February spot is 20th Century Studios' The King's Man, which jumps ahead from its February 26th, 2021 release date. So all of these different things are moving and shifting, but as I said, it's really going to be hurting the theaters that are trying to get back on their feet, but are having a difficult time doing so because all they have are older films, which I I think is great. I love going to see screen, uh, you know, big movies or older films or some of my favorite films, classic movies back on the big screen, but it's not going to be a big sell for a lot of people. There's a lot of people that would say, you know what, if I want to watch Star Wars, I would rather just watch it at home. I'd rather watch my un, you know, my, <laughs> my untainted version, my Harmies to Specialized Edition without the George Lucas cuts randomly in there with all the random CGI. I'd rather watch that instead. And guess what? I can totally understand why. I myself love going to see films on the big screen with the big sound, but that, of course, is just me, and a lot of people are not like me, which is why theaters aren't doing well here in North America, why a lot of movies are not making lots of money here in North America, on top of, of course, the various restrictions um, in various states and at various theaters um, with different capacities as well. But having all these films get moved, Black Widow getting now, now moved a full year, I think it's interesting that Chang chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings, I don't really see that as an Independence Day or even a post-Independence Day film. Just does not really seem to, to fit very well. And I don't think Shang-Chi is going to be a huge moneymaker. Is it going to make some money? Well, it depends on the theaters, right? If there's no theaters because they keep moving all these films, well, then it's going to make even less. And then they're going to be stuck with all these films costing hundreds upon hundreds of millions of dollars and no net profit. That's a big problem, too. When you delay films, you now have to spend more money to keep the interest alive by putting more money into a marketing campaign, but then you also risk potentially losing out on audiences who are just going to get tired of waiting, and you still need to pay back and still need to make money back on the money that you originally spent on it in the first place. Uh, so here it says, uh, Kamal Nanjani says, eternal delays to November 5th, 2021. Marvel made the right responsible choice. There's a pandemic. Nothing is more important than health and lives. I can't tell people to go to a movie theater until I feel safe going. Take care of yourselves. I promise it'll be worth the wait. Oh, get out of here with that nonsense. It's not because they care about people. It's because they they want to make money. Like, seriously, the fact that you have one of the actors, one of the stars of the Eternals trying to spin this as some type of, oh, it's all for the health of everybody. Oh, it's all because we care. Please, please spare me. It's because Disney wants to make the most money possible, and you probably get some kind of cut from it as well, so you want to make the most money possible. You and your Hollywood elitist friends do not care one iota about the regular everyday people. It's one thing for you to be honest and say we're moving it because theaters are not open and because there's a lot of restrictions. It's another to try and spin this as them being so uh, benevolent, so benevolent to try and help everyone because we're in a pandemic and this is real, damn it. Guess what? I've been to a theater a few times now. Everyone in there was totally fine. Everything felt safe. They're doing all the things they possibly can to make it as safe as possible. And, and guess what? The chances of you actually catching it are pretty damn small. 380 million people here in the United States. 
Very few in percentage wise have actually gotten it around a little over 1%, close to 2% of the entire US population. So the chances of you catching it in a movie theater, not very high, despite the conditions seeming to be uh, quite uh, susceptible to it. But uh, anyway, we also, of course, got Spielberg's West Side Story moving from December 18th to December 10th of next year, which guess what? As I said before, let it just go away. Let it just continue to move and move and move all the way until the very end of time because no one wants it. No one's asking for it. And I hope it bombs for that very reason. And Soul is taken to November 20th is interesting. This will put pressure on Universal whether to move Crudes 2 or not. The latter studio having a home release drop anticipated for Christmas. It might mean that AMC is the only circuit playing Crudes 2 due to its shortened PVOD window deal with the studio. Regal and Cinemark will not have it. So that will indeed be interesting. And I honestly don't really see how Soul itself will make a crap ton of money either because movies in general are not making money here in the United States. And even though we could point to Mulan being an example of how not to do things, uh, I don't know if Soul is going to be able to have any soul remaining. But anyway, what are your thoughts about this? Do you think that this is a smart move on their part? Again, financially, it does seem to make some sense. But there is indeed a two-edged sword to this because if the theaters cannot survive until this new release date, then the whole pushing of it is going to be even worse of a decision because money that you could have made more of now with more theaters available for you might not be there coming in 2021. If 2020 is an indication of the future... 2021, 2022, 2023, et cetera, are going to get even worse and worse and worse, especially being in the midst of the election year and being in the midst of some potentially crazy crap going on. People are going to want to have an escape. And if we don't have the theaters and we don't have new brand new films that we want to go see on those big screens, I don't know what they expect to play their films on. So let me know your thoughts about this and everything I talked about in the comment section below. If you like this video, smash that like button, hit that subscribe. It helps out a lot. You're all amazing and beautiful people. I hope you have a wonderful day. And as always, God bless. And now a huge shout out to all of my September Patreon and subscribe star members, Albertus Magnus, Animation Commentator, Brian P., David Bobrizic, Dion, Divex, Enrique Evangelista, Father Christopher Miller, hail to you, Father, Father Damien Cook, Frank the Tank and the Shawhan Wiener Dog Clan, Harold Francis, The Hunky Chunky Funky Monkey, Inflamed Wood, Intertrap Productions, Jason Clark, Jacob Juice, Jeffrey Toon, Jonathan Carney, Kenneth Cameo, Lady T, Laura the Modern Major General Story, Mad Mitch Dunaway, Mike Jackson, Mr. Peabody and his evil twin with the beautiful hair, On to June, Orange Hat Reviews, Out of Step with Reality, Outpost Dyer, Riff Magos, Rosetta Allen, Steve Glasker, Teresa Martin, Theodore Benden, Tina Bojan, and Tina B. Thank you very much for being my supporters over on Patreon. And to my subscribe star members, stand for John B., Perpetual Punster, Robert Revo, Mr. Roy, Glinzer, Darkstar57, J. Alex McCarthy Jr., US888209 Fast, Dean Heiss, Harold Francis, J. Rod the Beer Guru, Nevadon G. Adams, and The K Man. Thank you so very much for being my supporters over on Subscribestar, and a shout out to all of my supporters on both platforms. If you or yourself want to get your name shouted out at the end of every single video and live stream, please consider joining on Patreon or Subscribestar. You can also get access to exclusive giveaways, to an exclusive podcast that I do twice a month with my friend, John the Flick Pick Flickinger, where we talk about just random stuff going on in the movies, our reviews, and also we take QA questions questions from everyone as well in those categories. So if you would like to have any of those things or access to them, or even the biggest of them all to be one of my chosen of Valhalla and get a t-shirt during your first month and also have access to be featured on the channel once a month on the chosen of Valhalla live stream, please consider checking that out in the links in the description below. You guys are all amazing and beautiful people. Have a wonderful day. And as always, God bless.